and welcome back to a new episode of Coffee with Toffees. My name is Toffees, as always, bringing you the information you need to know to make your life a little bit easier. You can follow me at Toffees underscore Dota 2 for updates on upcoming matches, tournaments, casting, and general Dota details, as well as the occasional picture of Toffees Jr. Now, quick shout out to our sponsors. Today's show is brought to you by the folks over at Razer, the makers of the finest gaming equipment on the planet, and Betway.com, where you can go and place bets for real money on Dota and other esports. So check them out, especially if you are uh, in the Eurozone. This is a place for you to go. So uh, if you can see the link, if you go to my Twitch page, twitch.tv slash toffees underscore Dota 2, there's a link there where you can actually get some... Uh, free cash to try it out and see how you feel about it uh, so it's a no risk high reward sort of scenario so definitely worth checking out now that said you want to support the show the old-fashioned way you go to patreon.com slash toffees and uh don't forget if you're listening on the podcast itunes reviews we need them give me give me reviews please uh that way we can get featured for the week and keep growing and getting bigger that said, today's show should be pretty simple. We're going to talk a little about the news. We're going to go over power rankings, and then we are going to finish up with the tournament roundup uh, brought to you by myself and our lead writer, Proxy PL, uh, who has been doing a great job with that project. So uh, we're going to run through all of that so that you feel like at the end of today's show, you know exactly where everyone stands in terms of tournament play. Uh, I can go out and face your next week in Dota without sort of uh, trying to have to do a lot of research to figure out what's actually going on. So the first piece of news, and this is the the biggest one right now this is massive is everyone's been complaining about the patch when do we get the new one when's this going to finally happen well it is officially happening ice frog tweeted out on his weibo account that 6.84 is coming after star ladder everyone else retweeted it right away but we at least now know that once star ladder finishes we will be seeing the new patch what does that mean uh the interesting thing i think comes to this there's a lot of tournaments one after another right now uh, in the scene, and one of the things is there's not a lot of breaks between lands. So what I think the first thing to talk about is that once this patch drops after Star Ladder, assuming it's immediate, teams who are going to the Summit land will only have two weeks, I think, two to three weeks to prepare for that tournament. If the drop is not immediate, that could be even less. So there's a very real possibility that the teams who have qualified for the Summit and are going, which we'll talk about a little bit later, may only have a week or two tops to prepare their strategies based on the new patch. And the new patch, I would go out on a limb and say they're going to make some big changes to a lot of the heroes that are popular. This isn't like past patches where we nerf supports and stuff. There's going to be a lot of hard carries. A lot of tanky heroes are going to get nerfed, I think. And this could be a very significant shift to the meta going into a major tournament, one of the bigger prize pools of the year. So uh, definitely we're going to keep an eye on that one. Should be pretty interesting. All right. Next piece of news, this is an interesting one as well for me. Uh, MLG Pro League Season 2 is announced. Now, Pro League Season 1 just ended with Empire winning. We'll talk about that because it gave them a huge, huge boost in terms of popularity in the media poll. That said, MLG Season 2 has announced, and not only was it announced, but it was announced that they will be holding it, the land final, at X Games in Austin 2015. So that means that that's a massive tournament. It's going to be uh, at a huge venue that's very visible to everyone. And it is happening. Hold on. April, May, June, July. It's happening before the big tournament that is TI. So we thought that Summit would probably be one of the last major tournaments. Now MLG TV is going to go ahead and run that June 5 through 7 slot. And uh, probably be the last big one before TI gets out and running and the qualifiers uh, get going. Should be interesting to see how that conflicts potentially with TI. I'm curious about that. I'm sure they talked about it, though, however. So, upside, though, X Games. Hopefully, we get some coverage on TV, but it's going to be great that we're featured at the event live for the LAN final. 
So that's the big news that came out. Uh, let's talk about power rankings that just dropped. This is the media power rankings uh, collected by Five Midas Gaming. Basically, we pull the best casters, analysts, statisticians, content creators, writers, uh, people from all over the place, and ask them their opinions on the top 20 teams in the world. The problem is we can't we can't really compare uh, apples to apples in the sense of the CIS region rarely plays China, China rarely plays America, so on and so forth. So this is the opinion of those who watch the games. Uh, I'll read the rankings off for you guys real quick. On the top is Vici Gaming. They unseated Evil Geniuses to take over the first spot. Number two, EG. Number three, Team Secret. Number four, Invictus Gaming. Number five, Team Empire with a massive jump. Uh, they are five. They were nine last week. So that's a four-point jump based off of MLG Columbus. Number six is Cloud9. Number seven is LGD. Eight is Alliance. Nine is Aces Polar. Ten is Ninjas in Pajamas. 11 is Ehome, 12 is MY or Team Malaysia, 13 is Hellraisers, 14 is Hyperglory Team, 15 is Na'Vi, 16 is Rave, 17 is Team Tinker, 18 Burden United, 19 MVP Phoenix, and 20 C Deck. So MVP Phoenix making it onto the roster at 19 when they weren't even featured last week. Team Tinker dropping all the way to 17 from 13th position. So a huge loss on their part. The one that I'm curious about is. Navi has gained three points. They were 18 last week. They're 15 this week. And I'm not sure what that's on the back of other than they are just a popular team. MY, Team Malaysia, also with a big three-point gain. Uh, they're a very deserving team that I think has moved up aggressively. So Empire and MY, both with big games this week. Uh... A lot, uh, Empire with the biggest, though, four-spot movement is, is a pretty dramatic shift for one week of assessment in terms of how the media sees your play. So uh, kudos to them. That's a huge move. That's going to be very, very good for them. Next thing up, we're going to do the tournament roundup, guys. We're going to start with ESL1 and, or, I'm sorry, join Dota MLG Pro League and then just roll from there as we go. Before that, we do that, we do have to bring you a word from our sponsors, and then we'll go into the tournament roundup and everything you need to know going into your next week of Competitive Dota. But here, right now, is Razorcoms. Razorcoms is a free all-in-one communication tool that allows you to stay in touch with friends both in and out of the game. With features such as friend lists, groups, mobile SMS forwarding, and call notifications, Razorcoms is a communication solution for the dedicated gamer. Razorcom's minimal in-game overlay has a panel that grabs all your messages and lets you see who is speaking in a voice call without interrupting your game. Now I'll always know who's breathing into the mic. It's always me. By pairing Razorcom's mobile with your PC, your friends can call you, no matter where you are. And welcome back. Thank you to our sponsors. And now we'll jump into the tournament roundup. The reason that I know that you're here to learn everything you need to know about Dota in general and where the, where the leagues stand at this particular moment in time. So as you know, join Dota MLG Pro League. Season 1 has finished. Um, and I will say that... We've talked about it. It's been a great, awesome... Uh, PPD actually did a really good video. You can go check it out on his YouTube channel about reflecting on the tournament. Um... It's been fun. I think it was a good LAN, and the fact that it was good enough that we'll be at X Games next time around uh, has been encouraging. The results were a little bit... Uh Caught some of us off guard. I thought a lot of people thought Evil Geniuses was going to be a shoe in to take this one home. Uh, at the end of the day, they got second place. They were upset by Team Empire. Team Empire took home $34,758. Evil Geniuses, $21,000. Ninjas in Pajamas, who got third, thirteen. dollars MVP Phoenix at fourth, got $8,000. Balkan Bears took home $4,000 in fifth place. And Not Today in sixth, got $4,000. So a little bit of cost cover uh, for their travel expenses. Good tournament, well executed, a lot of fun, unique format. Uh, I think that the highlight of the tournament for me uh, was really the panel. I thought the panel was really great at the tournament. It felt comfortable. It was a good example of what a LAN should be like. So congratulations to MLG Pro League 1 for putting together a great event. Now on to the stuff that's in progress right now. ESL1 Frankfurt 2015. In the EL EU, uh, European Union, only one slot left, as uh, VP and Alliance have both secured the other two, and four teams are still fighting for it. NIP got beaten by Tinker, which is a little bit of a surprise, as NIP is listed higher in our power rankings, but the and Tinker has had a large fall-off, uh, which is strange. So, uh, still, you know, that's why it's a media poll, so most might have missed that with all that was going on this week with uh, MLG. But the Swedish squad didn't play the best, so that could be the offset there. Uh, big Best of three is on its way with Empire facing Cloud9. 
Uh, before that, it will happen. However, Navi will take on Team Tinker uh, with the Ukraine showing in Red Bull Battlegrounds. This will probably be much closer than some expected. So Navi has moved up in the votes, remember, and da Tinker down. So maybe some folks do think Navi could advance past Tinker, uh, which I think will be about as far as they go in this tournament because that means they'll be running into Team Empire or Cloud9 on the back end. In the SEA, only winner of the single elimination bracket uh, will fly to Frankfurt for the main event. So Team Malaysia has beaten MVP and will advance out of the loser's bracket. I'm sorry, not the loser's bracket, just a straight up bracket to face Maneski for the top position. Honestly, Maneski versus Team Malaysia, it's kind of a no-brainer for me. We could see a massive upset, but it's a best of three. So expect Team Malaysia to advance to the land final at ESL1 Frankfurt. As far as China goes, the main qualifier will be a single elimination bracket with only the winner going to the land finals. So again, this is a one team makes it out sort of deal. Um, it looks like LGD and IG, who are the defending ESL1 Frankfurt 2014 champions, will be the top contenders uh, as they work their way through. The problem is they have to play each other before they get to the finals, and that match is already set up. Teams that are participating, by the way, uh, in ESL as a total, EG, VG, Team Secret all got straight invites. Alliance is a qualified. Aces Polar or VP, as they just changed their name to, is qualified as well. We're waiting on that last EU slot, uh, which I think will likely be Empire with the way that they've been playing, uh, or C9. S CN, the Chinese qualifier, is very likely going to be Invictus Gaming, though LGD has not been a slouch of late. And uh, obviously, MY coming out of the SEA. So that should be good. Base prize pull $250,000 for that particular tournament. Summit 3, we're getting close to NA, EU, SEA. They are done. They're taken care of. We know who's going. Uh, the last team is going to be coming out of the Chinese qualifiers, and LGD is that team. They beat Ehome in a very close best of five, three to two, and secured the only Chinese spot for this game. Keep in mind, IG was knocked out by Hyperglory team a couple of days ago, and we talked about that big upset there, opening the door for LGT, LGD to take this spot. And they have gone through the entire bracket undefeated. I'm sorry, not undefeated. They lost two games to E-Home and one to Hyperglory, but they have not dropped any uh, full game sets and have made it to the winner's bracket all the way to the final. So the actual teams participating in the Summit 3 are going to be VG Gaming. They're the defending champions. Rave, Evil Geniuses, Not Today, Team Secret, Cloud9, LGD, and then one team from the Redemption Vote. IG, Navi, and Alliance, uh, one first phase of the voting and only three they're the only three teams still fighting for a slot voting ends today So make sure you check it out if you haven't had a chance to already prize pool yeah, started at 100,000 It's up to 250 already. So that's gonna be a massive tournament before uh, TI so look forward to it I know that they're gonna have a lot of great stuff going on there at the actual land event itself very excited about this one All right moving on to Dota pit three Quick update on where we're at for that. Uh, as you guys probably know, the format is the top two in each group placed in the winner's bracket. Uh, third place goes to a loser's bracket round two. Fourth in place goes to loser's bracket round one. Sixth place is eliminated. So this is why the bracket looks sort of already put together to a certain extent. Uh, basically means that if you did better in the playoffs, you have a better start chance in the actual tournament itself. Playoffs should be pretty interesting. Um, we saw that C9 won a tiebreaker against NIP for third place in their group, which got them into the loser's bracket round two. But it's going to start up very soon here uh, with Team Empire and Team Tinker in the loser's bracket versus, and then Nip versus Vega there. And they've got to start the slog right out of the gate. The teams coming into the winner's bracket round one are EG and Team Secret, Hellrages and Virtus Pro. And uh, the big news is Secret and Evil Genius is going head to head right out of that bracket. Prize pool started $80,000. It's up to $250. 58,000 already so this does make it one of the biggest prize pools of the year at this point uh, for an online tournament especially and that's a 223 percent increase over what their initial investment was so pretty cool for dota pit to get that many uh, maybe it was the pudge set which was really nice uh, it seems to be bringing people in d2cl a quick update on that uh the format, as you guys probably know, we're going with formats because there's so many different ones. The top team from EU group stages qualifies straight to the land final, while second through fifth place uh, finishes fight for the two uh, spots in the playoff. Only one from a Chinese division will go to the land finals. In the EU, you know, every team can grab up to 14 points. 
Burn United qualified for the land finals as the first team in the EU group, while both HR and Empire secured their spots in the playoffs. The last BO2 in the group stage, Alliance Empire will determine what two teams will join the CIS squads in the playoffs. It's important to note, though, that PR won against NIP 2-0, so in case of a draw, PR uh, will qualify. We've already talked about the Chinese teams. The qualified teams so far, because of the Chinese qualifier system, is VG Gaming. Burton United has also qualified as the top team in the group stage. And we're waiting to hear which other teams will join them. Uh, two EU teams get to go. And it is very likely going to be between Hellraiser's Empire, NIP, and Power Rangers. Their prize pool started at 50000 has only gotten to 78000 So this tournament, a little bit smaller uh, in terms of overall prize pool, but there are still some pretty big teams like VG Gaming going to be going in for this one. But not a surprise that we don't see some of the heavy hitters uh, like Secret or Empire, or EG, I'm sorry, playing in this particular tournament. I-League Season 3 is the next one up on our docket. Uh, Keep in mind that a lot of big teams have not joined this one either due to problems in the past, but it seems like they're running a pretty clean ship right now. As uh, Let's see. We talk about the SEA for iLeague, is I think where we're at right now. Um, with MVP losing in the first round, Team Malaysia is really the clear favorite uh, to pass through. They've got to beat Can't Say Whips. Team Tinker won their qualifier for America and has advanced to the land finals. And VP lost to M5 in the semifinal, which was a big upset. But Alliance have beaten them in the finals and secured the only European spot. So, participating teams at this point. Uh, and the prize pool is supposed to be $300,000 from what I understand. LGD is getting an invite. Alliance will be going to the EU qualifiers. Team Tinker from America. SEA looks like it'll be Malaysia again. And these guys are these guys are proving just how good they are. And then four Chinese teams that have yet to be announced to us. So Ailee continues to grow. Uh, I look forward to seeing how Malaysia plays because this team, uh, keep in mind that they were Ehome Malaysia, Ehome dropped them and since they were dropped they have just gone crazy and have been just crushing everyone. Shout out to Marku13 hanging out in Twitch chat. Thanks for being here live. Alright, East uh, Dream League 3 was the next one up on our list here. Bird United won the second open qualifier and will play in the league phase. So far, we've got Alliance for Dream League 3. This is who's going. Alliance is an invite. Ninjas in Pajamas was invited. Empire was invited. Navi was invited. Aces Polar got in through a qualifier. Bird United just got through a qualifier. And we're waiting on the last two teams to get through the second or the third and fourth qualifier rounds. Prize pool is based out at 100000 Tournament has been a lot of fun, but I think it's interesting that one of the best teams playing in this tournament is Aces Polar, who did not get an invite, but had to work their way in through a qualifier. So that should be interesting to see if they upset some of those invited teams. East Portal is underway, and Four Clovers and Leprechaun, you may not have heard of them because a lot of people call them the AKA European Rejects, is made up of BZZ, Hani, Sexy Bambo, Yol, and Go Black, won the third open qualifier to this event after a hyper long best of five, I mean, it lasted a couple hours here, uh, against 4ASC. Could I magnify? What's the button to magnify the webpages, right? Uh, they lasted for a couple of hours against 4ASC, but ultimately they did take the win. So the qualified teams will be Team Empire, Virtus Pro, Ninjas in Pajamas, Hellraisers, uh, My Insanity, and then the Four Clover Plus and Leprechaun or European Rejects, as a lot of folks have come to sort of call them here. Okay, the prize pool, by the way, for that tournament is 121. Uh, it has risen to 142,000. So uh, nothing spectacular just yet, but doing a lot better than it used to than it was earlier. All right, so that is the updates for East Portal. Last one we're going to talk about today is going to be Red Bull Battlegrounds, guys, and we're going to click that up. So the format for this tournament is relatively simple. It is the top one from each region goes to the land finals. Now, let's run through them. CIS. Uh, HR grabbed the CIS spot in this competition. However, it is worth noting that Navi have played much better throughout this tournament than they used to. Art style has been a very dominant on his chin and looks like there is still something left in Navi's tank. They made it to the back end of the CIS. Uh, they advanced past Team Empire as well as Virtus Pro, both two top teams on the rankings right now, and that may account 
for why Navi has moved up in the radio uh, or the media poll so significantly much. EU, Team Taker has won the EU qualifier. I, I mean, Team Secret, I'm sorry, has won the EU qualifier. Uh, Freudian slip there. Not uh, not a big surprise. They did go up against Cloud9 in the final, but ultimately won that 2 Oh, America, uh, if we talk about them and how we're doing in the American qualifiers, it has not started. So America had three invited teams and a huge qualifier to qualify. Uh, I guess we're just not listed on the website right now. Um, very unexpectedly, Root Gaming made it all the way from the pre-qualifier and will play in the main qualifier. They've beaten NAR, or uh, North American Rejects 2-0, EHUG, Wheel, Void Boys, and UG in the process. So we haven't had the qualifier. We had a qualifier to the qualifier. And Root looks like they will be very competitive uh, in that. Surprised a lot of people. SEA, Team Malaysia won. I mean, that's one of those things. Like, SEA, who else is going to win? These guys are destroying that entire region over in china as expected ig grabs the trip to the land finals but again it's lg and invictus fighting for that top spot and invictus only barely taking it off of lgd so lgd who is a team that if you watch our chinese assessment uh, episode was not expected to be competing with ig who a lot of folks thought would be number two in the world uh lgd is on fire and has just been really fighting their way in so look for look for a very good Chinese presence at TI, man. They are doing some really great stuff. So qualified teams, uh, if you want to put it in short form for Red Bull Battleground, Team Secret, Hellraisers, Team Malaysia, Invictus. We're waiting for our last one to come out of America. Presumably, it'll be EG. Base prize pool, $75,000. Um, and that's it for major tournaments that are going on right now. I do want to take a step back, though, and say, guys, uh, we are getting close to the TI invites and the qualifiers. Things that are worth noting, Empire won Columbus, uh, MLG Pro Columbus today or this weekend. And that, honestly, I think may lock up a chance for them to get a direct invite to the event. If they keep playing the way that they have, if they keep finishing in the top three or four in every tournament and this big win uh, over EG... I think gets them a CIS nod, potentially, into the big show. So, Empire, keep up your form. It's been impressive. And also, I'm going to call it now, guys. I think Chinese Wrecking Ball is going to be a term that we use in uh, in the actual TI. I think these guys are going to be phenomenal. Invictus, VG, and LGD are all forces to be reckoned with. And HGT is no slouch either right now. Uh, Ehome also being really competitive. So I think that we're going to see a huge Chinese presence. I think that Team Malaysia is going to, for the first time ever, mean that an SEA team is going to worry people. A lot of times SEA shows up at these big events and no one even prepares for them because they're sort of a, a, a small scene compared to everyone else. Malaysia could very well change all of that, so we'll continue to follow their progress. Uh, though it is worth noting Rave, another team that's been coming out very strong in the in the SEA market. So look for SEA to have a much bigger impact this year in TI, and I'm excited about uh, post-summit when we start seeing those invites come out it's a, a wonderful time and i think everyone's really really going to enjoy it so a big shout out to our writer for the show pl proxy for helping me out if anybody else is interested in writing for the show or getting involved with helping to make clips um or storylines or things like that we'd love to add new content new media uh the folks from join dota and beyond the summit and some other studios as well have given us the nod to utilize some of their clips and their uh replays so if we want to create segments if we want to have contributors who sort of uh, do game analysis or storyline wrap ups of a tournament. I'd love to have that. So get in touch with me, 5 gaming at gmail.com, and let me know if you're interested. A big thank you to our sponsors, Razor and Betway, uh, both for helping to support esports on a small scale. Uh, or they're supporting on a big scale, but helping the small guy be able to do what he loves to do. That said, you've all been wonderful. Thanks for watching. Remember, you can follow me at Toffees underscore Dota 2. And of course, if you want to support the show, you can go to patreon.com slash Toffees and give whatever you like. But that said, have a wonderful day. Play more Dota. And as always, Toffee's out.